what is the Soul Coaching Program? Soul Coaching is a spiritual journey that is divided into four one-week periods. Each week is dedicated to one of the four elements, air, water, fire, and earth. For I believe that our memories, beliefs, and emotions are tied in some mysterious and organic way to the elements of nature. By activating these elements within us, we can also activate quadrants of our souls. For many years, I worked as a practitioner using a system I developed that was based on these four elements. I taught this modality to therapists to incorporate into their practices. The system was based on the idea that the elements have an effect on the psyche. I found that when clients immerse themselves in images of the elements, each element evoked different emotional responses, as well as different kinds of memories. The remarkable thing about this elemental approach to therapy is the way that it reveals the emotional impact that the elements have on us. A proverb from India states that each of us is a house with four rooms, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. But unless we go into every room every day, we are not complete. The elements are powerful tools for entering these inner rooms. Throughout history, the elements have been associated with natural balance and wholeness. Ancient people knew that within each element were patterns of energy that permeated the universe. They used this understanding to develop cosmological models to create a sense of harmony in their lives. From Native Americans to ancient Greeks, Egyptians, Mayans, Aztecs, Persians, Celts, and Hindus, the mysterious panorama of nature has been divided into separate parts that are designated by the four elements. Egyptian sages fervently believed that reflecting upon the four elements provided a profound understanding of life. In the mystery schools of Mesopotamia, initiates underwent rigorous rites of air, water, fire, and earth to test particular aspects of their natures. Hippocrates, honored as the father of medicine, declared that a patient's health depended upon a balance of the four elements, and the great Sufi poet Rumi wrote that the four elements were the foundation of life and had a profound effect on the human spirit. For all of these people, the symbolism of the four elements knitted separate pieces of reality into a cohesive whole. Each one brought a gift that gave balance to life. The spirit of air gave the wind with its cooling breeze in the summer. The spirit of water brought refreshing rains. The spirit of fire gave warmth from the sun and the spirit of earth brought forth the hills, mountains, trees, and plants on our planet. The underlying energy of all the elements was the creator, the source of all life. Nature is a melding of the elements a vast cauldron of air, water, fire, and earth, and none can exist without the other. Yet using the individual elements to represent conditions of life can allow for a powerful integration to occur in our life. I believe when you embark on this spiritual cleansing program, it is immensely valuable to do it in the context of the cycles of nature, as its energy can help bring you home to your spiritual roots. An overview of the 28-day soul coaching program. Days one through seven are devoted to the properties of air and are associated with clearing mental debris. Days eight through 14 are devoted to the properties of water and are associated with your connecting to your emotional self. Days 15 through 21 are devoted to the properties of fire and are associated with clearing the shadows from your spiritual self. Days 22 through 28 are devoted to the properties of earth and are associated with strengthening your physical self. Additionally, after you have undergone the 28 days, 
you are encouraged to embark on an inward journey, much like a vision quest, which can take from a few hours to a few days. After all the clearing you have done, this will be a time of stillness for the soul to reveal its sacred messages to you. How can I fit the program into my busy life? No matter how busy you are or how hectic your life is, you can do this program. There are assignments each day which are divided into three levels. You choose the level at which to participate. Level one, which is called Committed to Change, usually only requires 15 to 30 minutes a day. Level two, which is called Going for It, and includes doing the level one exercises, will usually take 30 to 60 minutes a day. Level three, which is called playing full out and includes doing the level one and level two exercises, takes as long as it takes. There are some days when you may just participate at the committed to change level, and there may be days when you want to play full out you may want to select a level of participation for the entire 28-day process, or you may decide to vary the levels as you see fit. For example, day three focuses on the clutter in your home and what it means to you. When your outer life is in disarray, it's difficult to find the stillness to connect with your inner life. Level one suggests that you clear clutter out of one small area in the bedroom or bathroom, such as one drawer or one shelf. Level two suggests that you clear the clutter in a larger area of your bedroom, bathroom, or bedroom closet area. Level three suggests that you completely clear the clutter from one of those rooms. You may want to choose level three, but you might have to wait for the weekend to complete this larger task. When should I start this program? Because the program is organized into 28 days, you may choose to start the first day of the month or follow the 28-day moon cycle, starting with either the full or new moon. You might also want to start at the winter or summer solstice or begin early in spring, which is naturally a time of new beginnings. Alternatively, you may want to schedule yourself to do this program during your vacation or start on January 1st. The most important thing is that you begin. Often, when you wait until the perfect time, opportunity will pass you by. When you plunge in, even if it doesn't seem to be perfect timing, dramatic results are often produced. Keep this thought in mind. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius power and magic in it. Begin it now. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. There are many ways to participate in this process. Since the 28 days are divided into four elemental cycles, you can also do this over a four month period or even extend it over the course of a year, assigning one elemental cycle to each season. However, it is often easy to lose your steam if you take a long time to do this program. That is why I have designed it to be completed in 28 days. Be gentle with yourself when you do this program. When most of us were growing up, we were taught to judge ourselves harshly if we did not do things perfectly. Well, fear not. You do not have to be perfect for this program to work miracles in your life. Do the best you can and forgive yourself when you do not do every exercise exactly as described. Almost everyone who has done the program has mentioned that even on the days that they missed or did not fully do the exercises, there was an amazing synchronicity that still occurred for them. It is important to remind yourself that the goal of this program is personal growth, not just completing assignments. In other words, Focus on your accomplishments, not on what you did not complete. Trust that changes are occurring at a deep level. If you have ever tried to unravel the knots in a gnarled ball of yarn, you will remember that the more you struggled with the knots, the worse they got. But if you gently pulled the strings 
around each knot, they unraveled easily. So be patient with yourself. Celebrate what you did complete and forgive yourself for what you did not. This is not a competition. It is an unweaving of the inauthentic self and a discovery of your soul. Everything that happens during your 28 days is a part of the process, even if it does not seem like it. The universe is whispering to you at every moment. There are messages for you in the morning breezes, and there is wisdom for you in the caw of the crow outside your window and in the cadence of an afternoon rainstorm. Even ordinary events in your life carry communications from your soul. However, your mind is often too full to hear it. When you make the commitment to embark on a journey to hear these messages, you will begin to hear these messages loud and clear. Over and over again, people doing this program remarked on the astonishing synchronicity that happened for them. There were mundane coincidences, such as plumbing problems during the water week, and electrical surges during the fire week. But they also experienced more profound coincidences, such as hearing from an estranged family member during the section on relationship healing, or receiving an anonymous bouquet of flowers during the section on gratitude. Just know that literally everything that happens during your 28 days is part of the process, even if it does not seem like it at the time. Goethe talked about this phenomenon when he said, the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unseen incidents and meetings and material assistance which no man could have dreamed would have come his way. There may be times when you notice some resistance to doing the work. That is okay. Even this is part of the process. Once you observe it, ask yourself, where is this resistance coming from? This may be the lesson for you that day. For example, if you feel overwhelmed and unable to complete an assignment, it may just be that your schedule is very full, or it may mean that you have subconsciously overscheduled yourself so that you do not have to confront the current issues in your life. Pay attention to the issues that arise during the program and also notice during which element they occur. Soul coaching, alone or with others. You may choose to do this program on your own but you may also decide to do it with others. I have found that it is often easier to complete the program if you have a group of people sharing the experience with you. The support of others can be extremely helpful and motivating. You may want to gather a group of friends together for mutual support. I suggest that you meet once a week for four weeks to complete your progress and to support each other. You could also meet once a week for 28 weeks, dedicating one week per assignment. Another idea is to form an online support group so that you update and support each other on a daily basis. You can also log on to www.soulcoaching.com or www.deniselin.com to locate a certified soul coach in your area for support and guidance either online or in person. In fact, when I wrote this book, I was also coaching a group of people through the soul coaching program via email. Every day, I sent a daily message with the introduction to that day's exercises. The feedback about these messages was so encouraging that I decided to include them in this book. You might imagine that through these words, you and I are in communication supporting each other in our spiritual journeys. Getting started. Where intention goes, energy flows. It is important that you take time to get clear on why you are embarking on this 28-day odyssey. What end results do you desire from having participated in this soul journey? What is your intention? Are you really ready to make a change in your life? 
Taking time to clarify your intention before you start this program will help determine the form that it takes. Enjoy the 28 days. Remember to be gentle with yourself and cherish your accomplishments. Feel free to do this program in any way that works for you in your life. Your journey towards connecting with your soul has begun. Don't wait for the perfect time. The perfect time is now. Listen to your soul. First, set aside a few moments of quiet in the morning and evening just to ask your soul if there is anything you need to know or anything that your soul would like to communicate with you. This specific act of intent can open your ability to listen and be receptive to receiving further messages. Keep a journal. I suggest keeping two journals during the program. I call the first one your process journal. It is for mental and emotional clearing and can also be used to express your feelings and to write the insights you incurred as a result of the daily assignments. I suggest that you use a three ring notebook and make or purchase colored tabs, one for each day, which will help you refer back to sections from previous days. The second journal is what I call a joy journal. Here, you might include writing, collages, drawing, poetry, photos, one a day to chronicle the great moments of your day or anything else that illustrates the joyful or magical moments of each day of the program. No matter what happened on a particular day, there are always special, meaningful, or magical moments. Chronicle them in a way that is creative invigorating, beautiful, or fun. Daily Affirmation Every day you will be given a carefully chosen affirmation that is appropriate for the assignment for the day. Affirmations work because what you focus on is often what you create for yourself. Some people write the affirmations on post-it notes and place them on their computer, mirror, or refrigerator as periodic reminders during the day. Alternatively, you can repeat the affirmations to yourself silently or out loud throughout the day. Your word is your wand. If you constantly tell yourself, I am not good enough, your subconscious mind begins to believe it and you end up acting not good enough. Consequently, people treat you in a demeaning way. If you feel that most people can't be trusted, you will find yourself surrounded by untrustworthy people. However, if you think that the world is filled with love, you will find love pouring into your life. Affirmations are usually stated in a positive way, so you may wonder why there are times in this book when an affirmation has a not or a no in it. I have found that there are rare occasions when using such a negative word in an affirmation can actually have more power than a positive affirmation does. Here is an example. For most of my life, I have struggled with feeling overwhelmed. It was a recurring pattern that kept me in a perpetual state of stress. So in order to overcome this negative pattern, I began to use positive affirmations. I have too much time and need more to do. This was great and really seemed to work for me. I felt less overwhelmed. There would be times though, when I would occasionally still find myself feeling overwhelmed. It was only when I yelled over and over, I will never indulge in the stupid negative pattern of overwhelm ever again, that something snapped. Since that time, I have been busier than ever, yet I have not felt overwhelmed. To me, this is a miracle. A so-called negative affirmation worked. However, if putting a no or not or never in an affirmation does not work for you, change the words so that they do work. Making a sacred contract. I suggest that you create and sign a contract for yourself that clearly states your intention for the next 28 days. It's usually much easier for us to keep our word with someone else instead of ourselves. We are often meticulous in keeping our word to others, yet we'll easily break a commitment to ourself. However, the vows we make to ourselves are even more important to the soul 
than the vows we make to others. If someone continually broke his or her word with you after a while, you would think that person was untrustworthy. When you break your word with yourself, it is a message to your subconscious mind that you are not a trustworthy person and often your self-esteem suffers. You can make your contract as specific or as general as you like. Use words that work for you and create an honest, realistic contract that you can keep. Here is an example. I, Denise Lynn, do hereby declare to myself and my creator that I will dedicate the next month to connecting with my soul. I will endeavor to be honest with myself and others to uncover the truth about who I am. Additionally, during this month, I vow to take time every day to relax and eat according to my nutritional needs rather than my emotional needs. I accept that adhering to this contract attests to the strength of my character. Write your sacred contract out on paper, sign it and date it. You might even want to post it in your home or put it at the beginning of your process journal. Create an altar. In ancient times, almost every home had an altar for it represented the intersection between heaven and earth. It was a place for quiet reflection and devotion. There is great value in recreating this ancient tradition while you do the 28 day soul coaching program. An altar does not need to be religious. It can be a highly personal representation of what is most important to you, your hopes and dreams and what you hold sacred. It can be a place to still your thoughts and open your heart to your own intuition. Even if you don't spend time in meditation at your altar, simply having one in your home is a powerful subliminal reminder of that which is sacred. It is easy to make an altar. All you need is a table or shelf. Spread a beautiful cloth on the surface and then place things on it that represent your intention for your soulful journey for the next 28 days. It should only include objects that are true representations of what is in your heart. Additionally, as a suggestion, place objects or photos on your altar that represent each of the four elements and also something that represents your spiritual source. You are now ready to begin the journey to the center of your soul.